Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a brand new video of Tokyo Ghoul Rebirth. And in today's episode, we're going to be covering some really good stuff. Because not only am I struggling to talk throughout the entirety of today, we also have a bunch dropped on the game over here. And I'm super excited to be able to get to it. So let's bumble our way through this, shall we? So from the beginning of this war, going upwards, we have things to cover, obviously. Heroes to talk about. But before we can get to that, we gotta talk about the mini-heroes. The ones behind the scenes. The ones that are pulling the strings to be able to make this world a good one. Here, we have territory battle number eight. With our hero and savior, Scarecrow, as the reward here. Now, we are gonna have only a one-week war. Meaning, it is going to be a more lackluster grind up to 10 mil and not really do too much kind of war though we do have some new dispatches here uh that are part of the drops i don't know about the names hiname fuiguchi or hiname hinami fuiguchi a sweet little miss and ryoko fuiguchi she who watches on i don't know about those translations i, I don't know about calling uh hinami a sweet little miss but we're going to go ahead and move on. Uh, these two characters are purely, like, just all-around RNG drops. However, both of them have some pretty good skills to go alongside their actual stats. So if you do end up getting some pulls of them off of your dispatches, the more the better. Because honestly, they are pretty alright. And for the actual war itself, we have the hero. Oh. Oh. Censor that. That's a spoiler. We have Scarecrow. Scarecrow, the hero and savior, and the stray ghoul. Um, so, this was a war award quite early on, I feel like, inside the auction arc in the middle of JP. So that means we've kind of reached that point in the wars over on Global. It's weird, because, like, the banners are all the way until, like, way past where the auction was. Like, we just got fucking Kagune Urie today. But the dispatches and wars are still so far behind, so we still have, like, Scarecrow and these rewards. We haven't gotten Kanai, we haven't gotten uh, the Naki. There's a bunch of them that we just have not even touched on, which is fascinating to me. Uh, we also have a unique ability of 10% rare drop, which you'll only get if you get to the top 50 inside the war, which sucks. Uh, we have a 5% new info drop rate, 5% success rate, 10 minutes go down, and territory points up times 1.5. All in all, not the greatest kit in the world in terms of dispatch unit. Um, his actual assist ability is 10% dispatch intel, which is nice. But you probably wouldn't be using him as an assist anyway. All in all, his points is probably the best part of his kit. And you'll probably just max out as many as you can or sell them off. He's honestly... He's, he's one of the more meh war rewards out of the ones that come around. Um, and additionally, we have some new boosts going on. We have Owl, we have Urie, we have the Juzo, which is the cross-dressing, like, dollhouse Juzo. And Hayashi Sasaki, uh, what does that say? B Black Reaper. What does that mean? Uh, anyway, uh, moving on. We have some new uh, quests here, and I don't remember seeing these other two sibling rivalry, Ayato or Toka, over here on Global Last War. So I'm pretty sure that all three of these are brand new outbreaks here, um, which actually is quite nice. Uh, all three of them are pretty viable in terms of, like, their usefulness on a team. So if you are missing, like, a dark tank, there here's an Ammon that can do pretty alright things and not get broken. They also have a healing Toka in the red. Most of them are just max out and get Haka, but who knows? Maybe it'll work for someone out there. All in all, good quests. They'll probably be around during the next war as well because it's only a one-week one. Uh, I doubt they would bring out three new quests and have all of them drop off within the next entire war. So probably plenty of time to get that done. But other than that, we do have some other stuff coming here where we have the... Owl Eradication Quest and the Urie Eradication Quest, both of which are fairly difficult boss fights that are, I would say, among the harder ones that get released for the game. Um, the Urie one, at least. I would say that the Takizawa one, probably one of the easiers, it, or easier ones that are around if you do have Narukami. 
Uh, artificial one-eyed ghoul owl stands in your way. Be careful of his powerful abilities consisting of a great number of assaults, inflicting bleed, but also getting attack, an attack boost against bleeding characters or after inflicting break. So basically, if you will let him do damage to you and you let him bleed you every single turn and you let him get a break on one of your characters, he'll probably one-shot a lot of your team. Buff up beforehand, try to get things in place before he attacks you. Um, I would say try and run a defense buffer such as Psycho, the dark version, uh, Birthday Mootski, someone that's just able to support your team and not have you take your entire health bar worth of damage. Mootski also works quite well, the attack down on Mootski is really nice. Um, and in general, just bring any of your light units that can one-shot this guy. Uh, Black Reaper might be a pick if you were to pull on him, whoever that is. Uh, Narukami, Urie, stuff like that. So, honestly, not that bad of a quest. I actually had a lot of ease with trying to get him done in one turn over on JP, so not too bad. And we do have Urie here, of which is a little bit of a harder quest, because it does take an extra turn. Um, so, Kuki Uri, depending on the situation, you could suddenly be driven into a corner because of his attack boost on ghouls and after inflicting a break. Edit your team with high durability characters to face him with, with, as he also possesses a skill to reduce your durability. So all in all, he is based on trying to get you broken, and if you break him, then he's able to get his awakening off, and he'll do pretty big AoEs to almost guarantee a break and a kill on one of your party members. So typically what you want to do is, during your first turn, try to have a good front row of high durability characters. I'd say above, like... Probably just six. Like, honestly, it doesn't need to be that bad. Just have a good foundation on the front of your team. Get as much skill charge as possible in the first turn. Don't break him. And then the next turn, break him as much as you can. Then do as many skills and try to get him done within that one turn. Because if you do let him get a chance to hit you, he does hit like a fucking truck. And he does one-shot characters that aren't boosted very very easily. So, all in all, it is going to be a bit of a harder grind on the Ticket Quest this time around. I'll probably end up trying to do the Owl one, if possible, when it comes around. Um, and pretty alright times. Uh, they will be around during the entirety of the war, so... Man, this one-week war sure does have a lot of new things that'll go away. I don't... <sighs> one-week war is really a rough way to get this done, especially because you're never going to be able to fight the Owl again after this. After this week... Then we're going to move on to the next set of quests, the next eradications, and the next whatever they're adding. I hope that they end up adding these eradication quests, even like lower drop rate versions, to like off-season at some point. I feel as if... Because we've went through so many, and so many of them are so fun to grind compared to the other parts of the game, having reruns of them during off-season may not be a bad plan. Uh, but that's just my whole thing. We also have a featured summon! In the, the dogged Chimera Quinque. She's blue Akira. She's bad. Surprise. She's premium. Don't pull. Uh, and we also have the Hinamatsuri Dispatch Summon. Two characters. Quite good. Uh, they do pretty good things. New info on the Toka. Minus 10 minutes. 1.4 times territory points. 20% success rate. And 15 minutes down. Excellent kit. All in all, fantastic. If you have the Haka for it, pull. Granted, the fucking has been destroying everyone's wallets because nine weeks of non-stop banners, two exclusive banners, and po possibly an anniversary banner coming up soon because my ass is grass and it hurts. Uh, we also have a Yomo here. He's pretty all right. He's a right hand that guards. That's actually a pretty rad name for him. 30% success rate up, minus 10 minutes, 20% dispatch, 1.5 times territory points, and minus 15 minutes. All in all, good stuff. Pull if you want to. They're pretty good. They're pretty cool. They look really nice. Do your things if you need to. And now we're on to Urie. I'm trying to shotgun through this because there's a lot to cover. And I'm excited for one particular thing. So we're, we're going to keep on trying to push here. Uh, we have Urie, the cookie. The Cosmic Cookie, the hero we all deserve. Cookie Urie, in pursuit of success, has come to the game finally over here on Global, and he's guaranteed on the final step with a festival character on the fifth step. All in all, fantastic, and I do really love his art in general. I do think he has some of the best... In terms of his awakening skill, I really like his skill portrait. I think it's, it's, it's some good stuff. 
Uh, able to inflict great damage to front row enemies before he awakens, and to one enemy when awakened. Make sure to good, make good use of his powerful offensive skills in any situation. Unlock his unique ability by raising the mastery level for him, and unleash a dev devastating amount of overwhelming strength against ghouls. So, all in all, you can hear already, he is an Awakening Light Unit, very similar to Arima Narukami, however, he's more durability damage based, which is a vastly different category than what an Arukami does represent. An Arukami is pure damage and paralyzation, so very unique in his style. There's very few Light Units currently inside the game, and he does have a unit that came out very soon after him that's very similar. Um, with 7500 HP, 750 attack, 550 defense, 9 AP, and 8 durability. Fantastic kit, to be honest. Solid defenses, not too low, not too high. 750 attack is really solid for what he's trying to do. HP is a bit on the low side, and durability is only 8. However, he makes up for it in some of his other skills he has below this. So, with the unique ability of Ghoul Killer times 1.5, honestly, 1.5 is on the lower side compared to some of the other boosts inside the game. And he is an Awakening unit, so he's only going to be... In terms of his dupes, unless you get 5 of them and get him to 100%, he's not really going to need them, and so you don't really need to shoot for dupes of him. Uh, I would say, at least. Dupes don't affect the Awakening skill when he is going up, so it's very interesting. Uh, we also have plus 600 attack, putting him up to 1,350 attack in total, I believe. Math has never been my strong... I, I, listen, my, my balls have been exposed too many times on stream for me not to check this. Because if I'm wrong about this, I'm going to be really upset at myself. 1,350. Okay, I can do simple addition. Thank God. Uh, we also have plus 300 defense, which goes up to 850. Fantastic, just from that point as well. Plus 3,000 HP, solid kit. Once again, up to 10,500. And then he has a 1.5 times break bonus, which, if you're running a pure light team on a raid, typically you don't have a lot of break bonus units on your squad, so it's actually not that bad. Granted, it does become less helpful once Eto drops. It's still a nice part of his kit, at least. Um, the fact that it's his 10 out of 10 skill is similar to the Feshirazu, so he's kind of a similar unit to that. Additionally, he has, at 100%, he has a skill which is 2 times damage to front row enemies and reduced durability by 5. You'll probably never use that. Because it's... AoE is nice. Single hit AoE that does a flat 5 durability doesn't sound that helpful. And then when he awakens, he becomes crazy. So I don't know any situation where you'd end up wanting to use that skill. Because when he awakens, he gains 1.75 times his attack, plus 2 times the skill gauge fill rate for 5 turns. This is great. This is the best feel- or it's the best feeling ever. They have like frame 4 Urie quotes for his very basic like chill version sure uh and his actual awakening skill is cure all status ailments and deal attack eight times to one enemy and reduce durability by 10. so he's a flat one overkill unit type of thing um He's very focused on being the end of a squad and being like the person that's able to get overkills on the end of an eradication quest. Honestly, if you do have him, he'll do a fantastic job during the season since he's boosted and since there's an Owl Takizawa quest that he can one shot very easily. Um, all in all, I do like Urie as a unit. I just can't. When he came to JP, I couldn't justify investing in him because there was other units coming up, including the Eto Owl that dropped before. And in this situation, in his banner, there's only up to the Kaya and Koma inside it. And obviously, he is a fantastic unit if you get him early on, but going all seven steps for him as a feature, it hurts. Especially when you have some other banners coming out sometime soon that require dupes, or ones that are currently around, of which require 100%. So... Great unit, fantastic uh, versatility, fantastic base kit. However, I wouldn't pull on him because we have a little bit of other priorities to talk about. So here, coming to the game after 14 minutes of build-up, 
is Black Reaper. Heisei Sasaki, the hero, the legend, the dreamer himself. So, Black Reaper has been a hyped up unit coming over to Global for a long period of time. Um, even the devs know it because they posted this thing on Facebook teasing Black Reaper coming to the game next week, which was Tuesday. Um, and I can see why. He was the beginning of the crazy power creep that came over to uh, JP back in the day uh, when we were doing stuff. Shirazu was already a step in the crazy power creep direction, and Black Reaper, when he first dropped, was among the craziest that has come around so far. So let's go ahead and read about him and explain why he was such an overwhelming unit, and also why he's not as overwhelming now as he would have been on JP at the time. Um, added to his skills, allowing him to greatly damage front row enemies, durability and health, he can increase the block rate and evasion by raising his skill level, making him out... out Making him an outshining character who is, excels in both offensive and on the defensive. His unique ability, which greatly increases his AP, is also quite powerful. I don't know about an outshining character. I, sure. Uh, I don't know about him shining, but I definitely support that. Um, so you can hear right now, they do talk about him needing his unique ability, which increases his AP greatly. And also that he has the block and evasion. So, with 11,500 HP, 1,000 attack, 500 defense, 6 AP, and 12 durability, he does have a really good base kit with an extremely low AP total. And this is where the difference between Awakening units and units which are like endgame crazy really comes to shine. Because the unique ability of Black Reaper is plus 6 AP, doubling his AP total to go up to 12, and he really does need it. Um, this unit is one of the ones, one of the few, I'd say, inside the game that need dupes to actually be viable, and without any, honestly, are pretty horrible. So, I'd say Black Reaper is one of the best units in the game. However, you really need to get him to 100%, or at least 80 to make him especially viable. However, with his base kit, he does have a pretty good foundation here. So he has a 1.5 times killer to light units, and a 1.5 times killer to dark units, despite him being blue. So we have a really heavy... There's a very heavy focus on light and dark units inside the releases before this. Um, Takizawa, Narukami, there wasn't Takizawa over on JP, but you get what I mean. Uh, Hakko Jakaniki, Ghoul Heisei, Rize. Almost every festival character that came out was light or dark. So him having the light and dark killer was fantastic for both strike and for basic use inside any quest you want to do. This is what makes him so versatile. Um, being good against red units, as well as having killers toward light and dark. Wait. Sorry, light types are called lit types? L-I-T. Like, it's lit. Like, it's lit. Like, it's... Holy shit. I can't believe Ar Arima Narukami is fucking lit! That's the greatest. That is an amazing discovery today. Bless Rebirth. Thank God for translations. Holy shit. Anyway, that is amazing. Uh, anyway, all in all, Black Reaper, through all of that, is fantastic and is able to get some very good neutral damage to all-around typings. He also has a 35% crit rate increase, which makes him double the skill charge whenever he gets a crit. And also, Break Burst, which is a 1.8 times attack bonus whenever he inflicts a break on a target. Granted, as a unit himself... Break Burst on an AoE is kind of rough, because that's what his skill is based on. His skill is a huge AoE type of attack, so he is kind of difficult to use alongside other Break Bonus types of units. He would have to be the last one that gets his skill off. However, he's still really good aside from that. Um, and there are some synergies alongside him that do work really, really well. Um, and additionally... His skill at 100% is increase your evasion and block rate by 30% for 3 turns, deals attack 2 times to front row enemies 10 times, and reduce durability by 10. So, 
First and foremost, he gets evasion and block rate, of which is two separate stats which have a double dice roll. So if he has a 30% evasion and block rate, it would do a check on the attack where there's a 30% chance out of 100 that he would block the, the attack and he wouldn't take damage. If that fails, then it's a second check where it goes, okay, am I going to dodge this? 30% check on that. So having the double versatility on that and having the double buff just to himself makes him absolutely incredible for trying to fight raids because he kind of is really good at tanking attacks because half the time he just ends up evading half of the attacks the enemy does. Um, honestly, excellent, excellent skill. Uh, here's the difficulty with him. If we go ahead and look at the character details here and we look through his mastery tree, we have level 2 at 20%. Deals attack 1.75 times, or 1.75, to front row enemies 6 times and reduces durability by 4. So, with one dupe through his entire tree, you would only be able to do 6 hits in total and do a little bit less damage and get no block rate and no evasion at all. Um, it does work with his break bonus because he still does get the minus 4 durability, however half of his kit is based on him having the block rate and the evasion rate so 20% is kind of rough when you get up to 40% he gets a little bit better he gets the 20% block rate he has his other stuff already on deck it's good then we go up to 60% with 30% block rate as well and then at 80% is when he gets the evasion rate as well so all in all I would say that black reaper you should get him to at least 60 off of this banner and then try to use stimulants to get him up to 100% if not, just use Stimulants regardless to get him as high as possible. Because genuinely, I do think that Black Reaper is one of the best, most versatile units inside the game. But he really is required to have maximum dupes to be able to make him the most overwhelming unit inside the game currently. Um, his damage is on the lower side compared to some of the units we're getting over on JP right now. As well as some of the other units inside the game like Takizawa, like um, Festival Amon for example. He's mostly focused on a complete all-arounder, but it's a very overwhelming all-arounder, uh, where he's able to do some of the damage and do some pretty good work. He's neutral to two different typings, light and dark, and he does extra damage to them. He's good against red units, which is actually a very rare thing because only Iwao and Wounded Kaneki are the most viable blue units right now. Um... He has a break bonus and a crit up, which are both fantastic skills to get on a tree. Especially 35% crit rate is absolutely incredible and is the highest crit rate I remember seeing throughout the entirety of JP. So all in all, I would say he's excellent to summon for. I would really suggest it if you are trying to go for it. And I'm going to do one multi because you never know what the world brings you. And if he brings, if it brings me a Black Reaper, I'll stimulant him. I'll, I'll put something into him regardless, because I wouldn't mind it. However, I don't care all that much about the character, to be honest. I've used him so often over on JP that I don't personally want to go for him on Global, because I want to try out new things. However, if the RNG gods decide to bless me, I can't fight against that fate. You can't fight crossing fates. And so let's do it. We'll get one multi done. And we might do a little bit of grinding. I don't know. It actually has been quite a while already. So we might just end off for now. Because um, I do have some stuff to get done before I do my stream later on. Because we're doing Walking Dead. However. Oh, step one in the Black Reaper banner is a go. And he's here. Damn it. Shouldn't have been cocky. I realized that. One SR. Ha. Huh. That hurts. However, that's about how I've seen the luck on Black Reaper go so far for a lot of people. Uh, the videos I've seen of the Black Reaper pulls for a lot of people around the entirety of, like, the game, like, the, the YouTube space, a lot of people are struggling to get him. And in two full rotations, I saw someone on YouTube pull only two copies, the Guaranteeds. So it seems like, despite him being a really important character of the game, there isn't much luck inside the air for him. Um, so, do what you can. Do the pulls that you want to. I'm probably going to end off for now and come back another time sometime soon. 
We'll be doing some grinding over on stream stuff a little bit later after The Walking Dead, so it should be a good time. And I'm going to keep on working toward the war rewards. I already have 2 million points so far. I'm going to keep on trying to get dispatches done, keep on trying to get points up. I'm not going to shoot for ranking, however, I care about getting to at least 10 million, because that's kind of my flatline goal for every war. I want to hit the goal on both versions of the game. So I'm going to keep on pushing, keep on trying, and get that shit done. Either way, thank you for watching today. Black Reaper is absolutely incredible and is going to continue being incredible. Um, we will have better units coming soon over here on Global, and I have a feeling that we do have some other stuff in the pipeline. Stuff like Owl Eto seems like it's already on the way, which is one questionable thing about Rebirth so far, but we'll see how they end up going beyond this and beyond the nine weeks of absolute death. Either way, I'm excited to see where they go from here. Thank you so much for watching, and Global is in progress. I'll see you later.